supermassive black hole, a million times wider, might at first seem more inviting. Since it has a larger event horizon, the pull of gravity is more spread out. If you go to a supermassive black hole, the tidal forces are weak enough that you can fall not only through the event horizon, but deep down into the interior of the black hole. So, with a good spaceship, you might be able to cross the event horizon into the black hole itself. Now, thanks to a computer simulation based on Einstein's own equations, we can see exactly what such a trip would look like. The supermassive black hole is surrounded by swirling light beams as superheated gas rushes into orbit at high speed. Light and matter are suspended by centrifugal force and then inevitably fall victim to the relentless pull of gravity. At last you cross the event horizon, the point where nothing can escape. So let, let's imagine that we fall through the event horizon. That's the place where space is moving faster than light. We fall deeper down inside the black hole. But don't expect the black hole to be black. Deep within, there's an inner horizon, a logjam of trapped light and energy. At a certain moment, as we hit the inner horizon, there's this infinitely bright blinding flash and that's all the stuff that's been waiting there trying to get out is just held there at the inner horizon unfortunately you wouldn't have long to enjoy the view it would vaporize you roast you vaporize you marmalize you almost certainly if you fell into a real black hole, you would simply, unfortunately, die. Science fiction displays a bit more optimism. Like the 1979 movie, The Black Hole. Space travelers do indeed fear this massive object. I will travel where no man has dared to go. Into the black hole? Why, that's crazy! Cuckoo is a Swiss clock. But even more cuckoo, the heroes actually survived their descent into the beast, where they're treated to a heavenly experience. Popular culture has cast black holes as the freaks of the universe. And the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way, weighing in at three million times the mass of the sun, seems especially monstrous. But is it unique? To find out, astronomers are probing distant galaxies to see if our giant black hole is one of a kind, or nothing special. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey is taking a census of the big galaxies within a billion light years. For every patch of sky, a steel plate is created. Each hole represents an entire galaxy within our view. Fiber optic sensors are plugged in. Each measures the distinctive spectrum of light emanating from a galaxy's core and can detect signs of hot gas swirling into a black hole. You can see the results. Circled in red, virtually every major galaxy bears the signature of a supermassive black hole. That was pretty amazing. Before that, we thought, yeah, maybe a large number of galaxies have black holes in them, but every galaxy has a black hole? That was something very interesting. The closer we look to the centers of galaxies, the more we find these black holes, and the inventory is rising high. So any idea for the formation of a galaxy will now have to include some explanation for how you get a black hole in its center. So how did every big galaxy in the universe end up with a giant black hole in the middle? 
To understand, we have to go back to the very beginning. The Big Bang. You got the Big Bang handing you your birth ingredients, your hydrogen, your helium, your, your traces of some other elements. So it's kind of like this, this soup. You put it together and stir it. The main stirrer for the soup is gravity, drawing together wisps of hot primordial gases. Over time, the clouds of hydrogen gas cool down and grow more and more dense until some coalesce into the first stars. These are giants, hundreds of times bigger than our sun. They burn out quickly and dramatically in the flash of a supernova. What's left at the core is a black hole. Perhaps the black hole becomes the seed from which the galaxy sprouts. The gravitational seed. that is used as an attractive force to accumulate the rest of what we would today then call the greater galaxy. Possibly seeded by black holes, the infant galaxies dance and orbit one another as gravity pulls them closer. So our Milky Way galaxy, as this time-lapse simulation shows, was not born in one single event. Instead, it was built over billions of years from a swarm of smaller galaxies smashing together, merging. But if another galaxy comes too close, they will each feel each other's gravity. And in that collision, what started out as a stately ballet of stellar orbits moving around the center of their galaxy has now become this maelstrom. There's no other way to say it. Galactic cannibalism, that's what they're doing. They're dining on their neighbors, eating entire galaxies. Well, for every galaxy you eat, if that galaxy has a black hole in its center, it's going to eat the black hole. The black hole will work its way down to the center of the large galaxy, making the center of the galaxy bigger as well as the galaxy itself. It's just that simple. The big galaxies get bigger, and the little ones get eaten. Galactic cannibalism is how galaxies grow, and with them, the black holes at their centers merge and grow bigger. But what does the presence of such a monster mean for the life of a galaxy? Brian McNamara believes he's found the answer, and it isn't pretty. That's it right there. We got it. That's it. Okay, so you want to go McNamara here. studies the life cycles of the universe's biggest structures, galaxy clusters. There it is. That's the galaxy. So that's what we've been looking for. This is the giant central galaxy in a galaxy cluster. Uh, and each one of these little dots here on the screen is a, is a giant galaxy as big as our Milky Way, uh, maybe even a little bit bigger. And they're all bound together by their own mutual gravity. So they're all... Uh, buzzing around this giant galaxy like bees buzzing around a hive. McNamara probes his galaxies with multiple tools. Optical telescopes, radio receivers, even x-rays. Oh, there we go. Check that out. X-ray images reveal a vast cloud of hot gas through the whole cluster across hundreds of thousands of light years. There's an atmosphere of gas um, that pervades the entire galaxy cluster. And it's an atmosphere like our atmosphere, except that it's far less dense and it's, and it's um, much, much hotter. But when McNamara looked at X-rays of the gas around certain clusters, he saw that vast clumps of it appeared to be missing. I was blown away. I'll never forget the moment we got the observations and lo and behold, these two giant cavities showed up in the X-ray emission. The size of the cavities was astounding. 
that's 200,000, 600,000 light years from end to end. So between that cavity here and this cavity here, we could stuff 600 Milky Ways in there. It's just astonishing. The energy involved is huge. Something powerful had pushed the gas away across vast regions of the universe. McNamara traced the power source to the center of a giant galaxy, a supermassive black hole. So we could see the beam coming out of the black hole and ending up in these big cavities. But how can a black hole, a creature famous for devouring everything within its grasp, spew energy across the universe? The answer lies in the way matter falls toward the black hole. It turns out, nothing goes straight in. As matter falls in, um, what we know now is that it spirals around in a disk, okay, very much the way when water goes down the drain. It doesn't just go poof, straight down the drain. Just as water spirals down a drain in a whirlpool, matter and light spiral at high speed into a black hole. And the speeds that matter can, can achieve around that black hole approach the speed of light. And when matter travels at that speed, it gets a tremendous amount of energy. Matter falling into a black hole is a lot of stuff trying to get into a very small place. And so it's like trying to fill a dog dish with a fire hose. Most isn't going to get in. The black hole chokes on the influx. And the high-speed whirlpool of matter produces a powerful magnetic field coiling around the black hole and shooting the energy outward. These enormous jets of energy, hundreds of millions of times the power of the sun, can blast right out of the galaxy 